You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. You wanted it, you got it. A radio program that helps teach you options trading inside and out, basic to complex. This is Options Bootcamp. Whether you want to learn how to protect your portfolio, generate income, or even become a master of volatility, the Options Bootcamp drill instructors will break it all down for you. Now, let's get you into peak options trading shape. Here are your Options Bootcamp drill instructors. All right, everybody, that music means we are back once again. It is Education Wednesday time for a little bit of what we cool kids call Options Boot Camp or Indeed OBC. My name, of course, Mark Longo from the T-H-E, OptionsInsider.com, as well as from the network upon which so many of you are mainlining out there these days. Remember, if you like what you hear, you should be listening to the full network, A. You're really missing out on just, a, I think, a literal boatload of content out there. So get out there, have some fun, listen to all the good stuff we've got popping off out there on the network. Speaking of popping off, we got Fed popping off as we speak, so things flying hot and heavy out there in the markets. Of course, if you like what you hear, you want to share it with your friends, leave a rating, a comment, a review, whatever your platform lets you do. All of it in aggregate at the end of the day does help new people continue to discover the content out there. And then, of course, if you want to go above and beyond, you want to join the pro out there, then only one place to go, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro, the place to go to learn more. Speaking of reviews and ratings, all that fun stuff, this week we have our five-star listener review coming in from, I guess, Ninja, but he's trying to be cool. Ninja with two N's. <laughs> and Ninja, Ninja. <laughs> I like it. Either way, he just, he's very succinct. He's through the point. He says, sub it. All right, I'm down for it. Yes, sub it on your platform of choice. Hopefully, if you're listening to this, you've already subscribed. If not, what are you doing? Get out there, subscribe, listen to the full network. Have a ball. If you want to go above and beyond, join us on the pro. We just had a double pro Q&A day yesterday. A man, it was awesome. So a lot of great stuff coming at you. Got a double header coming at you today as well. So if you're in the pro, you get a double dose of Options Boot Camp coming at you today, just like you did last week. Man, because we like you folks. So you don't have to wait a week for your second episode. It's right here for you in your ear holes right now as you listen, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro, the place to go to learn more. As we go around the horn and see who's joining us out here on the old Options Boot Camp end of year spectacular edition here. First, let's go out to the southern volatility mecca, at least not quite Austin this time, not going that far south, but no, we're going a little bit a little bit closer to home. Let's maybe revise that to the southern options mecca, aka right outside the real mecca, which is Chicago. We're going to Frankfurt, where we are joined once again by the black hatted one himself, Mr. Dan Passarelli from Market Taker Mentoring. Mr. P, welcome back to the show, sir. Hey, Mark. It is great to be back. Um, we've got some great things to talk about today, and I'm looking forward to it. All right, we do have some great stuff to talk about. And joining us to help us round out our options boot camp year in high style, we've got our old friend making a return appearance on the show, Mr. Matt Amberson, the founder over there at Orats, and now the auto father, a.k.a. the creator of the rogue AI that is stalking the options markets as we speak. Uh, Mr. Matt, welcome back to the show. How goes the battle to contain auto, sir, and keep him from becoming sentient? 
Yeah, I didn't know this was such a big show. I now, now I'm really nervous, Mark. Uh, you know, this is a uh, near end of year palooza, so uh, I'm I got to get ready to go here. Otto, what do you think? Yeah, Otto's in agreement. Uh -oh. He's he's ready to go. I'm scared. Otto is listening. That means we got to get rolling with the show right on into <laughs> a little bit of the old options drills. Colin Mooch. Time for our favorite pastime, option drills. We're going to take the strategies learned during the show and teach you how they can be employed to achieve a specific objective. Do you hear me? Yes, sir! All right, everybody, welcome to a little bit of the old options drills. And today's episode, inspired by something we did earlier this year, actually, in the summertime. We had an episode back on June 7th. It was episode 240, and it was entitled, quite simply, Is It Even Worth Selling Options? Or should it be, Is It Even Worth Selling Covered Calls Anymore? Because a lot of you had written in at the time, vol was eroding. It was heading into the summertime malaise, and everyone was like, eh, I don't know if it's even worth doing. So we kind of had a little bit of a discussion about it on the show then. And our buddy, Mr. P, he's, he's always been a big fan of covered calls. He loves them. I think he's told me before off the air, he's never met a covered call he did not want to sell very aggressively. So he is very much on the pro side. And then uh, we've done a lot of shows with Matt over a number of years now. And we've also talked recently, we had him on the show back in September talking about the wheel. And so Covered Call has come up a lot with him and on this show again as well. I know a lot of his back tests have pointed to maybe a little bit different conclusion, which is the fact that a lot of the best Covered Calls in terms of performance seem to be at the end of the day when you push the Covered Call as far out of the money as possible, a.k.a. the entire driver of profit is really the underlying at the end of the day, so... Why are you even doing the covered call? So this has been a question that has kind of lingered for us. Again, we touched on it a little bit back in June. It's always been our intention to come back to this and have what we call here the great covered call debate, the, the one episode to end the debate once and for all, the one episode to rule them all here. It took us a little longer to get to it than we want. Like, lots of going on this year. Go figure. We got deep into the wheel, which is, again, covered call related. But now we're back at it. We're going to do it today, listeners, the great covered call debate. We're going to... Decide this topic once and for all. Is it even worth uh, selling covered calls anymore? And you know what? It's a good thing it actually took us a little while to get to this because volatility has done naught but erode <laughs> over the better part of the last six months. When we were talking back in June, vol had already come off, but it was still in the mid to high teens around a 15 handle. We broke a 12 handle just as past, got into an 11 handle recently. So vol has continued to come off, continue to erode, which again raises this question, the specter of is it even worth selling covered calls anymore? So let's go out to our guest. We'll give him pride of place to kick off the great debate. If you want to get into any personal slander or slurs as well, Mr. Matt, have at it. The floor is yours, sir. But a lot of our listeners want to know these days, is it even worth selling covered calls? Is it even worth doing this anymore? <sighs> So to, to answer that question, I, we do uh, as we're wont to do uh, over at ORATS, a bunch of back tests. And now we even have the ability to test in certain environments. So we could, uh, we could back test over the entire 2007 to present, and we could back test whenever the volatility was low. We have ways to define low. Uh, we could define it by uh, an IV one-year percentage uh, into thirds, so we we would say under 33%. Uh, we could look at the VIX just in general, and we call low under 15, so it's been about a third under 15, a third in moderate, 15 to 20, and a third above 20 so uh, of the time. So that's how we look at that. So uh, on the first question, you know, so we use, uh, I'm going to look at SPY today, um, just the short call portion of it. And if you look at sp if you look at what are the best performing, there are some actual ones that perform that have some uh, return to them. It's not very much. I mean, you're adding a quarter of a percent at best. So I mean, that's really quite poor, right? So and that's way out of the money. Obviously. Uh, since 2000, 
seven spies been on a tear, so short calls are going to look bad. But um, so back testing, you know, does not look good for this particular strategy. You got to go out 111 days uh, to get an average annual return of a quarter of a percent. You know, and you're, you know, able. You're you're probably going to cut into that that spy uh, uh, that spy return just to give you uh, an idea of what 111 days what that five delta looks like is because that's how far out you need to go. You're getting about 70 cents and you're going out, uh, for example, you're probably going out. So uh, I want to say 15%, 12 to 15% out of the money. So, I mean, I guess, you know, that that's kind of the average return. So you're, you're going out quite a bit, but you're, you're not going to get that much. So, I mean, uh, so just know that that's kind of where you, where you would want to be if you're going to be selling these. Um, and uh, on the other question, you know, when the VIX is low, you know, how, how do things, how does this particular strategy do? So I could just set it to uh, VIX below uh, 15, and then you get, you know, even worse results. Then you have to go out 300 days to the two delta. Is the best one, and you're only getting just barely above break even. So True Delta, <laughs> yeah, I know. And so you know, I mean, it's just not good. Nothing's going to back test in the, in that. Um, now, I, I I should say, we have some. Uh, we've done the wheel strategy. I mean, I know I might be getting ahead of myself. So uh, we back tested the wheel strategy, but I'm going to leave that hanging uh, for now. I'm going to I'm going to leave that as my uh, kind of answer. Well. And I said spy, and I, you know, we also looked at like Citicorp. Uh, that's kind of been you know, you know, up and down and up and down. It hasn't really rallied as much, and still, those don't even look that great. Uh, you know, similar, I, I would say, kind of similar returns. TLT again are all negative. So, um, you know, so on the cover call back test, they don't look that good. Mark, how's that for a start? Uh oh, shots fired over here, Mr. Dan. It is now time for you, Mr. Dan, to take the ball and run with it for all of the covered call proponents out there. And if you want a little extra fuel to the fire, you should have heard some of the stuff Matt was saying about you before I brought you in on the show earlier. It was not to be, not for public consumption, sir. I think he was questioning your parentage, your lean, all kinds of things were going on out here. So I expect this to be a very fiery retort. But that said, you heard the numbers. For yourselves, in a decent vol environment, you're talking a five delta, 111 days, and in the vol environment we're in right now, two, I can't even say it with a straight face, two delta and 300 days, at which point, why are you even selling that call? So, Mr. Dan, all of the covered call proponents are now turning to you to defend them, sir. Why should they be doing this? This nonsense, sir. Well, I think you might have oversold the Dan as a proponent uh, universally of covered calls here. Uh, I am a proponent, but never met a covered call you didn't like. I think are my exact words. <laughs> yeah, those those were the words that might that you might be overselling a little bit there. Um, but I am a fan of covered calls. But like with any other trade, uh, it's always got to be very selective, and there's got to be certain criteria. One thing that I definitely have never met is a trade that always works universally all the time. Uh, so, you know, that is definitely something I never met. But I do like covered calls under, uh, you know, un under the right circumstances. You know, when we have some other things that we can layer on top of, you know, just looking at it completely uh, general from a, a, from a back test standpoint, when we can kind of pick our spots where there's resistance and where there is overpriced volatility, um, which is a nuance that I, I don't know if, if Matt did back tests on this. Um, I think what I heard you say, Matt, is that you looked at uh, three different tranches of where basically uh, the, the, well, the implied volatility of spiders are. But when we start taking that relative to historical volatility and, you know, really picking our spots with these things. I don't know, man. Uh, I, I think that they can be really, really powerful. Um, and, and they're not without their, 
without their drawbacks and, and their shortcomings, when we're in a period like we've been in for the past six weeks or whatever it's been, where the market's just violently gone straight up, this covered call has been a little challenging to trade. Um, so I'm kind of, I don't know, uh, I, I definitely wouldn't call it firing back in that regard, but uh, but I, I do feel strongly just from personal experience that when when you pay attention to some nuances that are not factored into the option pricing model, not factored into a, you know, just a pure universal back test that they, they can be pretty powerful and they can add some value to your portfolio. Now, obviously I, I was having a little fun at the top of the show when I said, Dan never met a cover call. Most of the cover calls he likes <laughs> out there. But uh, that said, Dan, I know a lot of your systems tend to bake in around earnings. So is it fair to say for you then that it's, primarily the single names where you're looking to sell the covered call premium and not what Matt was alluding to earlier with the, you know, the 111 day and the 300 day two and five Delta <laughs> calls in spy. You're not a big index covered call writer, but more of a single name guy. Uh, no, I mean, a, a little of both for sure. Um, I, I definitely have done a lot of covered calls on, on spiders in, in my IRA. Um, and you know, I mean, sometimes I'll try and avoid earnings in single names, but sometimes, um, when I'm doing it as a wheel strategy type scenario, I, I will ride them through, uh, earnings, but I'll try and I'll try and go out a little bit further out of the money. Uh, and I guess when I say wheel strategy, I think I might mean something different than most people mean when they say wheel strategy. And so uh, based on what Matt was saying earlier, he kind of deferred talking about the wheel strategy until the next uh, iteration of our conversation. So I'll drop mine and I'll kick the ball to you there, Matt. And um, uh, we can jump in and talk about what we both think about this uh, idea of what a lot of people call the wheel. Really quickly before we get to the wheel, because uh, I had to have some thoughts on the wheel. But Mr. Matt, just to tie up a little more on the covered call, and specifically, uh, Mr. Matt, you were talking about indexes. You also mentioned City and some single names and looked at some names where it hasn't been the most effective, shall we say. Were there any points in your back test, any specific moments or use cases or even names where you saw and said, you know what, actually, the covered call worked out pretty well on these. Any, any leap to mind for you, sir? Sorry about that. I'm holding some cards close to my vest ab about the... Uh... About the wheel strategy, because there are some interesting uh, ways that you could you could uh, play it with the wheel strategy. But um, you know, I mean, for the most part, though, uh, you know, it's it's pretty universal that that there's no systematic way really to to run a covered call strategy. Um, you know, but I agree with what you know Dan's saying. You know, there's there are, are probably some times if you're um, you know, looking at maybe technicals and if, if, a, if a, uh, uh, stock gets overstretched, I, I, I could, you know, we do have an RSI I could check out. Um, uh, but, uh, in, you know, in general, you know, especially for a lot of these stocks that have moved, a, a, you know, a good deal, um, it hasn't worked out. Now I want, I would say one thing, um, the skew in SPY has gotten a lot, um, flatter. Uh, and I think that's because of the zero DTE phenomenon. Um, and if you want me to explain that, I will. But um, And that's going to be actually better for uh, call selling strategies because basically what you used to see is a very steep skew where the puts were high and the calls were low. And now it's because everyone was, was uh, doing covered calls and buying puts to protect their downside. And it was such a systematic thing for market makers that they really had to jack the ball. I think with the zero DTE, it gives them a lot more chance to get uh, more puts and, and uh, sell more calls at a flatter skew, which zero DTE tends to give them. And that's kind of made it so it's going to be better going forward uh, for for call sellers. Uh, so that it, I will I will give you that. Mark. It's funny you mentioned that because that just came up on one of our pro Q&A sessions yesterday, which again is another reason why you should be listening uh, to the pro Q&As listening. A lot of great topics on there, but we were looking at 
some of the skew in the E-mini yesterday, just offhand, and we both kind of came to the same realization, uh, the guest and I, that, wow, these puts are nowhere near as bid as they usually are, and the calls, you're right, nowhere near as offered as they usually are. So maybe we need to revisit this again in another six months. I thought this was going to be the definitive one, but now, once again, Matt, zero day, throwing a wrench into everything out there. But it, that definitely is a phenomenon we had noticed. I wasn't sure if it was just seasonality at work or there was something else at play, but... It is definitely something we notice. So in that sense, listeners, the covered calls, you're overriding. Even though vol is low, if skew is managing to remain a little bit more resilient, it could offset some of that a little bit, which is interesting. So Matt, is it fair to say before we get into the wheel, which I want to get to too, is it fair to say your viewpoint on this is there's really no good systematic way to implement covered calls across, let's say, even a broad index portfolio like Aspire, SPX. It really is more of a pick your poison type of thing. You have to do it opportunistically. And if you try to do it systematically, uh, you get back to what we were talking about, the 300-day two delta type calls. Yeah, I mean, that's the only systematic uh, way that's shown profitability in a back test. But again, if you're nimble and you think you have, you know, you could, you have the stock and you don't mind selling it at a certain spot, I mean, that's a, that's a different computation but i'm just i'm saying from a from a back test point of view but uh, i would agree with that statement uh by the way i don't know if we're talking about live markets but the markets just just jumped up from about unch to up 75 basis points about three quarters of a one percent here uh the fed is is saying party like it's 1999 basically yeah the fed <laughs> saying three rate cuts next year sometime hold rates steady today uh, so, yeah, Vol uh, Pop and I did put on a nice little big strangle right before the announcement. So as I am wont to do, I definitely dumped the calls while we were talking because <laughs> uh, I've said many times on Vol Views, you know, you have you have a short amount of time to get the calls usually in VIX land. And today was not the day for VIX calls. So those went the way of the Dota. We'll ride the puts now and see how those work. But, yes, uh, looks like uh, for the Bulls, at least getting a little bit of the old checkered flag wave to them saying, hey, let's go. Let's cross the finish line here. You guys both want to get to the wheel. I shall not hold you back any longer. The wheel, of course, a very popular strategy. It seems it's almost inescapable on this show these days. All conversations come back to the wheel. We touched on it. I've lost track of how many times in the second half of the year here. So obviously a very popular strategy. But of course, one of the main elements of the wheel is the covered call. So if the covered call ain't worth doing, then what are we doing with the wheel? Dan, I gave Matt the last word on the covered call. So I'll be charitable. I will give you the first word on the wheel, since you both have so much to say on the wheel. So what are your thoughts on the covered call and how it maybe impacts your thoughts about the wheel? Ah, yeah. So I've had a, a bit of an epiphany over the last maybe year or so with, um, I guess what you'd call the wheel strategy and the covered call strategy. Uh, and the wheel strategy, I think a lot of people would define as, hey, I own stock. I sell a covered call. Um, if I skate, I sell another call. If I get assigned, uh, then I sell a put. And if I skate, sell another put. If I get assigned, then I sell a covered call against that new stock at. Um, and, you know, that's fine. That's the traditional way of, of, of doing it. And um, there's been a lot to talk about on that. But what I, what I have sort of, uh, what I have sort of layered on top of that, and I've, I've done a lot of work on this. Uh, in fact, I updated our covered call class to reflect what I call the cycle recycle trade. And it would be interesting uh, if a back test is even possible on this. I don't really know. But here's what I discovered. It's not really about the premium you collect when you sell a call or sell a put. It's it's the system of, of doing so. And, you know, Matt said, Hey, I haven't, uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think you said something like you haven't seen a, a, a systematic way to do it. When you sell a call and the stack goes up through the strike price, you know, to, or through the strike price, if you go and you buy that call back for a, a loss on that spoke in the wheel, but then sell another call to potentially take in at as much or more premium than you lost on that initial call in this spoke in the wheel. Um, that's part of that. That's what I call a cycle 
of covered call trades or wheel trades. And sometimes what happens is, you know, you own the stock, you sell a call that's somewhat out of the money. Uh, it goes to the strike. So you buy, so basically you, you buy a debit call spread to roll up to a higher strike, maybe even a diagonal to roll up and out, uh, which is probably more often the case. And, and then if it goes up through that strike again, then you do the same thing. You roll up or up and out until you get to the point where at some point the stock stops going up and it goes back down and you've collected enough premium where that cycle, which could be selling one covered call, could be selling two consecutive covered calls, could be selling three or four, even five. Once that cycle is over, you have made money. So like if you look at it from an annualizing return standpoint, and and I, I haven't really looked at these longer term ones like Matt's talking about or, and that far out of the money. Um, but if you, you know, if, if you consider it from a cycles standpoint, um, it's a different way of thinking about it. And when, like, if you just annualize a return on like a two week covered call, like that's completely ridiculously unrealistic. Realistically, maybe if you were to take that annualized return divided by like four or something like that. Now, now when you consider that it's a cycles trade, it starts, it starts to make more sense and it starts to be a little bit more realistic. So, uh, I don't know, I guess I would be really super interested to hear what Matt says about that. And even if something like that could be back tested. So, Mr. Dan, what you're saying is I can't sell a covered call at GameStop and then annualize that to 287%. That's not realistic. You're telling me that, sir? What are you doing to me here? Burst in my bubble. A lot of our listeners are just unsubscribing right now as we speak. They don't want to hear that noise. <laughs> All right, Mr. It, 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 it's possible. It's possible. <laughs> Mr. Matt, same question for you. Obviously, the wheel inescapable these days. The wheel, two income components, obviously a short put and a covered call, both of which are risk equivalent. So you're kind of like you're doing the same synthetic risk trade twice. So if the covered call ain't worth doing, stands to reason maybe the short put ain't worth doing either. So what are your thoughts there? And also what Dan just brought up, his new, uh, I guess you can call it wheel epiphany of looking at the wheel as more of a cycle type trade. Yeah, I'm not sure how to answer that, the, both of those questions. But here's what I will say is that we, ha uh, we, we have finally put the wheel back test into our quiver. So it's, it's, it's pretty difficult because you have to say, okay, uh, there's, there are two strategies, one triggers the other. Um, so you have this, uh, you have this uh, put, we start with the put selling and then we, you know, so we set up a strategy around that. So what's the, uh, you know, so what's a good strategy for that? Meaning uh, DTE, how, how far out you want to go from, uh, how many days out do you want to go? And then what's your Delta around then? And then, um, as Dan said, what are your rules? Uh, are you going to roll those? Or are you going to do, you know, and which we haven't put in yet, honestly. So I can't really answer Dan's question other than to say uh, the strategy that I like best is, is actually pretty aggressive. Um, it's not what we uh, it, it's not what you think. And hopefully I could do this justice. But. Uh, the strategy that I've uh, fallen on, I'm, put, I'm putting it on in, in paper trading now, is the 50 delta seven day put to sell, and then if and then if you get assigned, you sell a 70 delta call, and that has the best risk adjusted returns, and they're actually pretty good, um, you know, pretty good risk adjusted returns, and I guess the um, just to kind of talk about that strategy. So you're selling a very meaty put and you're saying, yeah, go ahead and uh, go ahead and uh, get me assigned. And then you're selling an in the money, but you're still getting a lot of premium because it's a 70 Delta call, but that still means a, a 30 Delta put. So you're getting a lot of premium, but uh, you know, you're not, you, you don't have the, the Delta. Uh, so and so that's that's come out the best, which I think is quite surprising. So, uh, in you know, in that case, uh, you know, I though that is a strategy that I that I'm trying out. So, uh, so I don't know if you have any questions for me on that one, but I thought that was pretty interesting. I like that. So to translate that, listeners, for those of you who don't speak Greek, fifty delta put is obviously an at the money put. So Matt's going right to the fire, selling an at the money put, 
And if he gets assigned, which is a pretty good chance, he's selling a 50 Delta option after all. Then he's coming right back after it and selling a now in the money call against it. Matt, is some of that extra meat on the bone? Is that to offset the lower vol levels we're in right now? How did you arrive at those particular at the money and now in the money levels? I mean, I didn't really have a conversation. <laughs> we just tried everything, right? So we're, uh, you know, we kind of threw everything in there. Uh, it, all these different delta ranges and all these uh, all these different uh, delta ranges on the calls and and the puts, and that's what came out as the best strategy for the entire period from 2007 until now. So, uh, y- you know, so the, that's just been the best so far. So, um, you know, and and like I said, we haven't done what we call the kind of ancillary tests where you test things like Dan was saying, uh, you know, rolling up and out, trying to keep the same premium and, and all that. We've just, you know, kind of test tested the, the, the what we call the base case strategy where you hold it to expiration. And then if you get assigned, then you sell the call. If you get assigned, then you, you start the whole thing over again. All right, Mr. Dan, same question for you, sir. What are your thoughts on Matt's, I guess you can call it straight to the fire wheel approach, really getting meaty with stuff. Is that how you like to set up your wheels? And any other thoughts on what Matt's putting down here? Yeah, you know, I find that pretty interesting. And, you know, man, like we've all been doing this a long time. Uh, But, you know, I feel like the more you think about something, the more you talk about something, you can always keep learning. So what I find interesting about that, man, I wonder what your thoughts are. So, you know, okay, so you think about it, um, a covered call is synthetically a, a cash cured put, right? Um, which is some nuanced differences uh, resulting from assignment and dividends and interest and such. So I wonder, so basically <clears throat> what you're really doing there is selling a 50 delta put and then selling a 30 delta put. Right. Because if you're selling a 70 delta call against it, that's basically selling a 30 delta put. And I wonder if some of the outperformance of that is simply from selling these higher volatilities, you know, Um, because even though the skew has flattened out uh, somewhat, I mean, I'm looking at the skew of the spiders right now and, and the puts are still more expensive than the calls. So I. I wonder if it has something to do with that, just simply selling higher volatility levels. I mean, yeah, it, it, you're exactly right. It's like selling a put and selling, turning around and selling a put again. So, uh, and that's what it's uh, has found. It's just, uh, you know, that premium collection is just kind of what ha- turns has turned out to be the best, you know, for that long period of time. Mm-hmm. You know, again, that's a systematic strategy. That's, uh, you know, a, a way to uh, to look at it from 2007 all the way till now, uh, you know, again, without doing some of the creative stuff that, you know, with all your experience that you have, Dan, that you might do in order to, to squeeze the most out and have the uh, lower, some lower amount of risks. But, um, yeah, I mean, you know, as far as as far as, uh, you know, how it performs in different volatilities. And, and all that we haven't tested that, but I but it it has been a pretty interesting uh, strategy to watch. It doesn't even do that as bad as you would think in some of these crazy uh, you know COVID crash and the great financial crisis. Um, it didn't do that bad. Um, so uh, it, it was an, it's a very interesting uh, very interesting strategy. And like I said, I'm paper training it now as uh, and and trying to see how it's going to do. So yeah, that's that's where we are with it. I was hoping to make the definitive word on covered calls with this year's debate, but I have a feeling with all this evolving information coming out from Zero DT, we might be revisiting this in another six months. So let's call it the Great Covered Call Debate Part 1 here. We do have to keep going, get into our next episode of our doubleheader. But before we do that, let's go around the horn. Final thoughts for our listeners that are coming in. They're newer to options. They're struggling with these covered call things. Mr. Matt will give you the final word first, sir. What do you want them to take away from this discussion in terms of should they or should they not be doing covered calls right now? You know, as a standalone strategy that you would just do systematically, I would say it's probably not the best idea to do. But if you're going to, if you have a stock that you say, hey, listen, I think it's getting overstretched or I think I have too much 
And, you know, like a permanent portfolio might say, you know, you want to have a certain amount uh, invested in, in all your stocks. And if and if it's gone up and, and you want to sell calls against it, I think that might be a good opportunity. Or in this kind of wheel strategy, I think there are opportunities for a call selling and put selling strategy. But like Dan said, it's almost just like selling puts, selling puts. So that's the way I would think of it. So on its own, probably not. But as part of a different strategy, probably yes. Or if you have a stock that you want to sell at a certain point, uh, it's a decent strategy to do, Mark. And Mr. Dan, the final, final word goes to you and the great covered call debate, at least for 2023, sir. What do you want people to take away from this? Hmm. Um, yeah, uh, you know, just keep looking at various opportunities. I mean, you know, it it, it has been a challenge to be doing covered calls on uh, spiders, you know, straight out, uh, even systematically. But the, I mean, there are still some stocks that um, I, I'm 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 not going to stop doing them on. I, I think that there's st it's still a viable strategy. Um, when we do it, you know, in my cycles type system. And I, I know I just kind of, you know, showed the tip of the iceberg there because it's only a half hour or so podcast. But um, I, I, I think there are still some opportunities for it right now, for sure. All right, that is going to do it for us here on the Great Covered Call Debate 2023 edition, at least. Look forward to more of this. And if you're listening live, you're in the pro, look forward to another episode coming at you immediately after this one. Uh, but before we get there, Mr. Matt, if folks want to check out all the stuff he got cooking, maybe go hang out with Otto. Where should they go? What should they do? Yeah, come on over to Orats. Check out our new uh, back tester that has the wheel in there and it's 65 million other back tests. Uh, hmm. uh, check it out. And we got a new custom back tester where you could edit and and fine tune them. So orats.com or hit me up at Matt at orats. And uh, yeah, thanks for the invite to come on the show, Dan. My pleasure, man. Oh yeah, yeah. Always a uh, great great uh, conversation, man. Check them out orats.com o r a t s dot com. Just don't poke the sleeping bear that is Otto. Let him lie. Just navigate around him. As you're doing stuff over there. And Mr. Dan, no rogue AI is for you. What's popping off in the land of MTM, sir? <laughs> um, yeah, you know, just uh, we're cranking away. Um, we've got some interesting things going on right now. We're looking at potentially doing a uh, resolution mastermind uh, in February down in Austin. Um, but, um, yeah, uh, same thing. And we encourage you to make your way on over to markettaker.com and check us out. There you go. Check them out, markettaker.com. we got to get on out of here back again instantaneously for all of our pro folks. Remember, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is a place to go to get access to all that fun. Back again the next week for all you on-demand folks, another episode of Options Boot Camp. Stay safe out there, everybody. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash The Options Insider, or via questions at TheOptionsInsider.com. <laughs>